Hi friends, hope you are fine. Now we have genetically engineered bacterium with human insulin gene producing insulin just like biofactories inside this bioreactors in large quantities. How did it all begin? This groundbreaking research by Paul Berg and his team in 1970s laid the foundation of recombinant DNA technology. This video is a humble attempt to explain his experiment, why is Berg called as the father of recombinant DNA technology, within 5 to 10 minutes. Let's begin. The objective of the experiment is develop a biochemical method to insert new genetic information into simian virus 40 DNA. Let us divide the experiment into simple steps. Step 1. Preparation of SV40 circular DNA. So isolation of purification of SV40 DNA. Suppose this is SV40 circular DNA. What he did was he cut this SV40 circular DNA with endonucleus followed by exonucleus treatment. So it becomes linear. Then he added DTTP or DATP. This A tail or T tail using terminal transferase enzyme. So it has a single stranded region, unpaired region. Then he annealed it back together. As there are single stranded unpaired regions, this will anneal easily in the presence of DNA polymerase, lichase, etc. He made a single stranded unpaired region in the linear form of this SV40 DNA so that it can anneal back together by forming hydrogen bonds in the presence of enzymes like. Step 2 was plasmid isolation from E. coli with gene of interest. So this is a plasmid that is present in E. coli. It contains galactose operon genes and also lambda phage genes after successive infections by lambda phage. So this is a plasmid that is present in E. coli. He isolated that plasmid. That plasmid has galoperon genes and lambda phage genes and he called this lambda dv cal DNA. So his intention was to incorporate this DNA into this SV40 circular DNA to make a recombinant DNA molecule. Step 3. Making compatible ends of this plasmid. He repeated the same procedure for this SV40 circular DNA. This plasmid is cut with a restriction enzyme, endonucleus and exonucleus. So exonucleus make terminal cuts in order to add this single stranded overhangs by means of terminal transferase. So it will become sticky whenever there is a complementary strand. It can anneal and form hydrogen bonds. So the same procedure he carried out it will, this plasmid can form a linear strand of DNA in the presence of this nucleases, then it can anneal back in the presence of enzyme. So he made the plasmid also compatible with compatible ends just like SV40 circular DNA. So both this SV40 circular DNA and this E. coli plasmid has compatible ends. Then he mixed it together in the presence of restriction enzyme. So cut this both this SV40 circular DNA and this E. coli plasmid with restriction enzymes. So it will be having this compatible ends. Then these are ligated together to form a recombinant DNA molecule. So this was the first recombinant DNA molecule constructed in vitro. Thus recombinant SV40 DNA is made which has as you see this is the SV40 circular DNA and this is the part of the plasmid with galactose operon and lambda phage genes. So he constructed the first recombinant DNA molecule, recombinant SV40 as a viral vector. So this can be used as a vector as this is a plasmid. This can be incorporated into a host where it can replicate. So this was his experiment. Then he further carried out this experiment to confirm the expression of these genes inside the host. His work was primarily on mammalian cell lines. So he transferred this into a host and also in E. coli, then further confirmed the selection followed by screening of transform colonies, including the functionality of inserted genes later he confirmed. So he was the first one to make a recombinant DNA molecule and in his later studies, he did transformation experiments 
and confirmed the functionality of inserted genes. So this was his experiment in a simplified manner. Hope you are clear. Now let us see the contributions of Paul Berg. Paul Berg is often regarded as the father of recombinant DNA technology. As we have already explained, he constructed the first recombinant DNA molecule or pioneered the genetic engineering research making the first recombinant DNA molecule laid the foundation for recombinant DNA technology. Then later, after this study, he was working on SV40 virus and E. coli. So there were many concerns in the scientific community regarding uh, the genetic manipulation of bacteria like E. coli, which is a common intestinal bacteria. So he organized a conference, the Asilomar meeting. In that conference, scientists working on genetic engineering drafted guidelines under his leadership for conducting recombinant DNA experiments safely. For his groundbreaking research, he was awarded with the Nobel Prize in Chemistry 1980 for his fundamental studies of the biochemistry of nucleic acids with regard to recombinant DNA technology. And finally, for all these contributions, he was often called as father of genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology, and this was his response. I am not the father because so many people were involved and in the area of genetic engineering, what we did is light the first spark and it changed the way everybody was thinking. We began to make new kinds of combinations in the test tube. We didn't have to relay any more on cells to do all this genetic manipulation. Once you had that, the genius of everybody out there made it into a big, big thing. And this was his response. And that is about the construction of first recombinant DNA molecule by Paul Berg and his team. Hope you are clear. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much for your support. You are with biologyexamsfory.com.